Hello, Hopewell. Thank you for joining us for worship today as we continue into the Easter season as Easter people, celebrating and praising God for Christ's resurrection and for our eternal life. We come to you today from the beautiful prayer labyrinth and garden here at Hopewell, where spring is popping up all around us and the sun is shining on God's beautiful creation. It is such a peaceful and awe-inspiring place that we are blessed to have here at our church. Along with Alan and Linda and Jonathan and all those who are helping to create our service today, we welcome you into the presence of God as we continue in our series, Walking Through the Wilderness. We are so glad that you are with us today and we pray that you will experience and you will feel the presence of Christ in your heart and in your home during our time together. Welcome. Our call to worship this morning has a simple response for you to join in with me. When I say, for this, Lord, we encourage you to respond at home, we are thankful. Together, let us welcome Christ into our presence. God, you have created this beautiful day. Your creation sings your praise. For this, Lord, we are thankful. You have created us in your image, designed us to be known and to know you. For this, Lord, we are thankful. Christ has made us heirs to your throne, sisters and brothers with all those who call on your name from around the world. For this, Lord, we are thankful. Your spirit ignites our hearts to be your servants in our community and our world, taking your peace and love with us everywhere we go. For this, Lord, we are thankful. God, Jesus, Spirit, three in one, holy in all ways, accept our worship today as you have accepted our souls. Be our rock and our redeemer, our refuge and our strength. For this, Lord, we are thankful. Amen and amen. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart Oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. Yeah. 
Today, as you hear our text read from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, I pray that you will hear these words with hope, that you will realize that God is with each of us during our own times of wilderness and isolation, just as God was with the Israelites as they wandered for 40 years in the desert, and just as God was with Jesus for 40 days when he was being tested. Hear now the words of our Lord. A reading from Exodus 17, 1 through 7. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. But Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Thank you, Cynthia, Chris, Sherry, and Marty for reading our text today as we continue to travel with the Israelites in the wilderness of Sinai. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this reading today that reminds us that you are always present with us and that you are always willing to respond in our time of need. We pray that as we explore this text together, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, that you would be with us, continuing to meet us even in the wilderness so that we can experience your great love for us. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're on this journey with the Israelites in our new series, because for many of us during this time of social and physical distancing, this new normal, living a life in a global pandemic feels like a wilderness experience. We've all lost something during this time. For some of us, we've lost our jobs, or some of us, we've lost our health, and even some of us have lost loved ones. And for all of us, we've lost that ease in which we used to live our lives, where we would spend time with friends, where we would go to restaurants, and we would socialize in our community. I recently watched a movie with Lisa and James, because you know we have plenty of time at home these days. We watched the movie Inside Out. If you haven't seen it, it's a Disney Pixar film about a young girl named Riley who moves with her family to San Francisco from Minnesota. As you can expect, she has lots of emotions and feelings about her family relocating. And everything she feels and all the emotions inside of her are controlled by these tiny characters. There's Joy, the spunky, happy-go-lucky leader of the group who's completely full of joy. There's Sadness, a, little, a literal blue character who is always looking down and sees everything with gloom. And then there's Anger, the short, red, always on the edge of his head, exploding into fire, attention-seeking emotion. And all of these characters are trying to run the operating board, which controls how Riley responds to everything going on in her new world. Watching this movie, I, I had an epiphany. All of my emotions are trying to run the Eddie Cameron show these days, too. And like many of you, I'm feeling the sadness of our current situation. I'm feeling the unsettledness of life being drastically different for me, for my family, for our church, for our community and for our entire world. And this feeling of sadness isn't the only one 
that I'm feeling. There's even feelings of discomfort and, and even anger all bubbling underneath this one emotion of sadness. And they are all jockeying for attention, trying to surface when they can. And I believe that this is how the Israelites felt and something that they experienced as they wandered in the wilderness, following Moses into an unknown and an unchartered experience. And in this experience, we'll explore how the Israelites turned their fear into blame and their trust in God into a test of God's character. Chapter 17 of Exodus continues the Israelites' journey from the Red Sea toward Sinai. They have just seen God provide for them manna and quail to eat, and now they are thirsty. They know that their physical need must be met in order for them to survive the wilderness and the difficult journey to the promised land. So they begin to grumble once again at Moses because Moses for them is their leader. The one who God told was going to lead the people out of Egypt. He really was the captain of this band of complainers. And so they went to him asking him to fix their water shortage. And don't you just love how the Israelites ask him for water? Give us water to drink. No please or may we have, or even, hey, Moses, you remember the other day when, when God gave us manna and quail? Do you think you could go and ask God again, maybe if he could give us water this time? No, none of that. They simply just said, give us, give us, give us. And I don't want to impose on the Israelites the emotion of greed here, because I know what it feels like to be really thirsty, but this request seems harsh, doesn't it? Give us water to drink. The Israelites here are at a breaking point. Are you at a breaking point in this new normal that we are living in? Are you like the Israelites seeing the reality around you and feeling a little overwhelmed or uncertain about the future or maybe even remembering back to lives before the pandemic? When we're honest with ourselves, maybe we are more like the Israelites than we'd like to think. In the text today, the Israelites are definitely remembering their time in Egypt where they had all the water that they needed. And their legitimate concern of not having water now here in the wilderness has turned to doubt and distrust of Moses. And Moses' response here is fascinating to me. He asked them two rhetorical questions. First, he asked them, why are they quarreling with him? And second, why are they testing God? Moses cuts right to the point. He sees past their emotions and into their hearts. And he knows that they are really wondering, is God with them in this experience? They had questions for Moses, and thus they had questions for God. Questioning God. Something that for some of us perhaps was never allowed when we were growing up in our faith communities. Maybe for some of us, we never felt safe enough to ask questions about God. Or for some of us, we were flat out told we weren't allowed to do it. And in this passage today, where the Israelites seem to get so many things wrong, for me, there is one shining example of an authentic faith, questioning God. They ask if God's plan all along was to bring them out into the desert to die. And that's an honest question for them. And maybe today in our wilderness, we might have some questions for God too. God, have you given me these resources only to take them away from me? Have you allowed me to enjoy this relationship to have it end so abruptly? These are questions that we can and maybe even should be asking God. Because God is good enough to respond with mercy and grace. And when God hears our prayers, and he will hear them he does not come with condemnation. And you know, perhaps there's no better place than to ask these questions when we are in the wilderness. Beth Borum, in her book, The Wide Open Spaces of God, says this about the desert, quote, it is a time when life is stripped down, dry and barren. For, for me, the wilderness is a time where we can really get real with God. And Beth goes on to say that we should think about our time in the wilderness or the desert as a virtue. Listen to what she says. One virtue of the desert 
is the ability to awake us to the disparity between who we think we are and who we really are. When we experience loss, when life is pared down and things we looked to in the past are no longer there to prop us up, we begin to see ourselves more honestly and become aware of what really is in our hearts. This is where the Israelites are in the desert, wrestling with their emotions in isolation, dare I even say, in their quarantine, and questioning God. All of this wilderness walking and all of this loss and despair asks a deeper question of us. Is God only present with you and me when we can see God or when God acts on our behalf? I mean, is God really with us in our scarcity and in our need? Many of us have these kinds of questions about the current circumstance that we live in, and, and many of these questions are similar to the ones that the Israelites would have asked too. Maybe our questions today start with, why God, or God if you, or even God, I don't understand. I'm guilty of bartering with God from from time to time, are you? God, I'll do that if you, or it would be really great, God, if. These are real and honest questions that in the desert we must wrestle with because the desert is too barren for us to hide from God. We are out there in the open, struggling before God. And Beth Borman says something again in her chapter that just stuns me about the desert, she suggests that we should actually befriend the emptiness of the desert because only then can authentic and intimate companionship with God be forged. And when we begin to forge this new relationship with God, our questions are known even before we speak them. And when our questions reach the ears of God, God responds and God always provides just like God did here in the wilderness with the Israelites. God heard their questions and their plea from Moses. And it's interesting that Moses asked God not to help the Israelites, but instead to protect him, because the Israelites were, were so angry, so scared, so fearful, that they were contemplating stoning Moses. I mean, wow, that escalated really quickly. But despite Moses' selfishness, God responds on behalf of, of the whole. God has a plan to satisfy their need, and that plan is miraculous. Water coming from a rock. And in this miracle, God provides their basic needs. God gave them water that could not only help them physically, but it would also allow their animals to live and their collective identity to keep going another day. And this water was unlike any water they had consumed before. This water was quite literally living water, life-sustaining and life-changing water that came not from their own searching or from their own digging of wells, but straight from God. And for you and me today, in our own wilderness and in our quarantine of physical and social distancing, Jesus is our living water. He is where we not only receive the nourishment for our bodies, but receive that thirst quenching water of eternal life. John 4 tells of the beautiful story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well, both there for physical nourishment. But in their conversation, Jesus tells the woman that he is the living water that leads to eternal life. And she wants that water more than the literal H2O that is deep down in that well. And she says to Jesus, sir, give me this water. This woman sought something better than her past. She desired to be given new life from drinking this living water. And in the desert, we have a similar choice. Do we respond like the Israelites, grumbling and remembering our past, or like this woman at the well who is seeking a bright new future with God? The gift of the desert, quite simply, for all of us, is that it reminds us that we need the living water of God. And today, living water looks like masks being made for our frontline workers, food being made and delivered to people in our community, online children and youth ministry so families 
youth and children can stay connected to each other and support for the COVID-19 fund that's helping families in our times of need. This time of physical and social distancing, this new normal that we're all living in, this time of wilderness walking can become for us either a test of God or a testing of our faith in God. And those two things are completely different. I pray that this hasn't been a time of testing God, putting God on trial to prove God's existence in your life. But instead, I pray that this has been a testing of your faith in God, a crucible moment where you can let the excess of life and the excess of all that's around you lay bare in the desert sun to be burned up and that a refined version of yourself can begin to emerge, a version that is satisfied with the living water that God provides to each of us through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Spirit of God is alive and moving today within us and around us. So let's center in and listen for his voice. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of living God we want to know you more and more we're hanging on every word come and speak to us oh. spirit of the living God spirit of Freedom.
Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for always giving us what we need, always providing for us the resources that will give us life. We thank you for providing for us in our time of scarcity, for being present with us even when we can't see you, but knowing that you are there through your spirit. We pray today, we pray for this week ahead that you would allow us to know that you are truly present with us through the living water that comes through Jesus Christ. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his death and resurrection as we continue to celebrate that. And thank you that we, in our wilderness, in our isolation, journeying with the Israelites and journeying with you, God, that we will know that your presence is guiding us and leading us into our promised land, into a place, into a kingdom that is of heaven and of this world world. We pray all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. On March 16th, the things that we were all accustomed to began to change. Our personal bubbles grew to six feet. Our calendars were being filled with Zoom calls, and our dishwasher started running 24 hours a day. While we continued to navigate these uncharted waters, we can hold on to the truth that while it seems like everything is changing, our God never changes. here at Hopewell, there are also a number of things that have stayed the same in the midst of change. Our adult leaders continue to spend hours each week investing in the lives of our students. On Sunday nights, we continue to meet online for the latest episode of HYM The Show and to break out into small groups. While our students still hold hope to serve on mission trips this summer, right now they continue to show Christ's love to their neighbors in a variety of ways including collecting food, making masks, and creating new ways to keep the neighborhood Easter egg hunt alive. While we don't know what the next few months are going to look like, we do know that we have a church that supports us and a God who loves us. Thank you.